Quilting Celebrations with Patrick Lowe's is brought to you by Robert Kaufman Fabrics, home of my Mixmasters collections, and all of the designer basics, prints, and batiks your quilt deserves. Sulky, makers of decorative threads, stabilizers, and books. Sulky, express yourself. The Warm Company, manufacturers of the perfect soft warm battings for quilts, crafts, and wearable arts. And Realize Your Dream, Gamel Quilting Systems, and and computer guided quilting machines. Today's show, I'm designing a birth announcement banner to welcome home a special delivery. You'll find complete instructions in the spring summer issue of Quilting Celebrations magazine. Okay, so I had this idea since this is the first episode mm -hmm. of the show that, and it kind of feels like I've been giving birth all along and all this this planning stages that we would do like a, a baby theme. It's a baby. So I had this idea. I thought it would be cute to do a little teddy bear banner. Let me just see if I can sketch out the bear. I love watching you do this. This is so different from the way I oh. work because I'm. Yeah. I don't feel like I draw well, so yeah. I skip that part and go right right from my brain onto the design exactly wall. exactly so, so i love watching you do this, okay. this is well this is a little sloppy because we're way. we're going to do it fast so i can get the idea across to you but um you know just a very simple shaped face just kind of bubbly um you know little round eyes and i'll show you what i wanted to do to make the difference between okay. the boy and the girl so the little boy teddy bear is going to have a a bow tie you know, under, just mm -hmm. put it, applique, put it under his chin. But then for the girl, we'll just put it on top of her head. Oh, great. So that's the only change yeah. that has to be made, you know, if you decide to make two or, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, do one for each just in case, um, you can do it easily either way. And then, um, so my idea for the banner was, you know, just a very tall, skinny banner so that it would hang on a door. Um, we'll put the teddy bear just down here at the bottom. I'll make sure his eyes look a little better than that, but, <laughs> and the bow. Oh, you know, I, I love doing, um, since you're a piecer, if you wouldn't mind helping me with this, we can do um, just a, a little alternate, not a checkerboard, but um, just alternate two shades of either pink or blue and do the, um, all the border in maybe one inch squares. Because I think Ooh, this great. is only you know, gonna be maybe 15 inches wide, 14, 15 inches wide. And then we can do, I know people are going to balk at this, but I'll teach them how to do it. They, a lot of people don't like to satin stitch or applique letters, but we'll, we'll work it's on that. It's not that bad. No, it's no. not. It's and I not. love the, um, the contrast that you're going to get around there with the frame. That'll be one. Yeah, it, I, it definitely enough. needs a frame. Yeah. And I also, uh, I have a new line of fabric out called Meander from Robert Kaufman. It's, um, it looks like you've stipple quilted. Just, oh, just meander. So yeah. I can use that for the background, and I think, I think it comes in the same shade. So we'll try mixing the dot to dot with the, the meander, maybe. Oh, that'll be nice. Give it a little bit of change in exactly. the scale of the fabric. So I think we're ready to. Uh, I'm going to take this to the computer because I've got to, you know, make templates and things like that. So I'll either, you know, I'll scan this in and maybe do some sketching on the computer and come up with the templates. Okay, so that's how you do it. You do your hand drawing as your inspiration uh, and kind of firm yeah. it up, and then usually transfer. doodles. You know, nothing more. Um, sometimes I do more fi finished drawings, but not always. And um, this one, I don't think. I, since the shapes are very simple, I'm probably going to be able to just draw them in Illustrator and uh, not have to scan it in or anything like that. So I can go do that. I can probably have uh, templates ready to work on maybe in an hour or so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's way faster than me trying to do like this. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got the help of a, a nice iMac, too, yeah. behind me. So <laughs> that would help. Yeah, yeah exactly. So we're ready to go. All right, this Let's is gonna be great. Let's go make this thing. All right, Good. thank you. So this is the part where I look like a professional um, because I get to use computer software oh, to perfect wow. so my that's design how you a little do bit. It? That's yeah. been my problem then. Yeah. I know well, I don't that. say I don't think you have a problem, <laughs> um, but this is what I you know I took the drawing the, mm -hmm. the the sketch that we did and I just uh, you know drew it from scratch in Illustrator. So I ended up with a banner. It looks like uh, I came out about 13 inches wide. Um, and this is where you get to see whether or not it's going to be an easy thing for someone to do fusible applique or uh, satin stitching on because these letters, you know, they have to be a, a good enough size that you can maneuver that around um, under right. the needle. I took the, I, I have already drawn the teddy bear's face. There he is. So you can see here, we have the bow at the bottom under his chin for the bow tie, but we can also pop it up there. And oh, how slick is that? Now it's a, a blue girl. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I'm just going to 
copy that, and I'm going to paste it right into our banner that we have right here. So there he is. Oh, wow. Amazing. Well, thank it's you. It's simple, and it says what you want it to say, and yeah. it's fun. It should be simple. It shouldn't be a chore to put together yes. something celebratory. You want to have fun doing it, and you want to have fun with the celebration. So mm -hmm. I try to make it as simple as possible. Oh, it's awesome. Well, I think we're ready to, uh, well, I think we're going to make the girl one so that we can see something different. We'll do it all in pink, so we're going to go out into the studio and work on the pink. Great. It's a girl banner. Good. It's time to start. Okay, cool. Yes. So here we are in the studio. This is my quilt and create studio here in Phoenix, Arizona. These are a bunch of my friends that come here for Quilt Cafe and some of the open sew and classes that we have here at the studio. Um, I love you guys. I hope you know it and I really appreciate you being here for the show. We are now going to work on putting together the I keep calling it a checkerboard border, but it's not checkerboard. We've got alternating colored squares that we're going to put together. Kay is a master piecer, so I'm going to have her do oh, that. Now, everyone that knows me is laughing because... I'm laughing inside. Yeah, because but. they call me the lazy quilter. Oh, well, I know a lot of those, too, so yeah. it's okay. So I'm a lazy it, quilter. If it matches, it's okay. If it doesn't, it's okay. Well, this but has to match. for you, <laughs> I will make it match. This, um, make it there match. is a little bit of a trick to this because we do have you know, a certain number of squares that have to line up with the, the background fabric. Correct. And it's, it is easiest to uh, strip piece it. So why don't you go ahead and show how okay. you got to this point, how, what, okay. what steps you needed to take. What you need to do first is you just need to start piecing your two contrasting strips together. And how wide did we cut those? Um, did we cut them? Inch and a half. Inch and a half, thank you. So we're going to have an inch finished. So we're going to take one of each of the contrasting fabrics and put them right sides together. Raw edges even. Raw edges even. Do you pin? I don't. I don't either. A lot of people pin. It slows me down. Yeah, me too. So we're going to take these two pieces right sides together. We're going to slide them under here to the machine. What presser foot are you using? I am using just a regular piecing foot. Okay. So I'm going to put this under here, drop my foot, and if I had a little tag, I'd start way back, but mm -hmm. I'm going to start right there. Okay. So now I'm looking ahead this way, and I'm just going to piece these together. Is this a, a scant quarter inch, would you say, or is it? Okay. Yeah, it's scant. Okay. We want to leave room for that thread exactly. and leave room for the edge when we. You don't have a lot of room it. to play with because these are finish out at an inch, right. so it's. And you want to make sure that you do have your full inch. So I'm just looking ahead and piecing right down this strip. What I'll end up doing is doing several sets of these. Right. So that then I will take two sets and stitch two sets together. It speeds up the process. Yes. And I'll just stop periodically and readjust since I'm not pinning. A, a lot of times in, um, you know, more traditional quilting, log cabins, you know, you're doing your uh, half square triangles, things like that. You need to be a little bit more precise than this maybe. Right. But again, we're just, we're putting a frame on a door banner. So right. we don't have to be quite as... Uh, this is supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, exactly. I don't want what I'm going to do is stop right here. Okay. Because I'm lazy, I don't have to stop You're and start chain, then. Chain I'm going to chain these right together. So I'm going to take the next set and put them right sides together, and I'm going to slide the end right underneath there, so that I continue, and then I'm going to adjust it. Get my Looks edges good. together, and zip right down these strips. Well, you like to speed right through it. Oh, I do. So do I. <laughs> I do, yes. Speed sewing. So I readjust these strips again since I'm not using those pins, and I really think it goes much faster this way than taking the time to pin. Mm -hmm. I think so too. And I do think I'm more accurate this way. And it's not even wavy. No. <laughs> no, it isn't. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a pretty straight seam. So I'm going to run right off the edge, and then, oh, this is the most fun. There's a button here that I can push. Oh, yeah. And it cuts my thread. I, I love my cutter. It's so on exciting. Yeah. I love that. So now I have these two sets of strips. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to sew them together. Okay. Okay. So I'm now going to put right sides together again. So you don't press first. You can. If you'd like me to, I will. But 
I'm an old garment seamer you are, from oh, the past, so, you're a so press you had to press first. every yeah, seam so press as first. you sew it. But it's fine. Yeah. We're, okay. we're fine with it. All right. We're we'll going to snip afterwards. this apart. So what Patrick is saying is that we could take this to the iron now and press it right like this so that we are putting our seam allowance towards the darker fabric. I agree. Yep. And then we would put this piece right sides together right on here. And we're going to line that up. And now we're going to zip right down this side. Mm -hmm. Same thing we did before. And I'm going to gauge it right there. Take a look at that side. Line these up and zip right down the side. As long as you make sure that your raw edges are lined up, it's going to come out straight. Yeah, it may look a little bit like a mess right now, but it really will come out just fine. So I'm going to keep going down this side, zipping it together. Mm -hmm. Get those raw edges together right there. And we're going to zip right down this strip. And it's just so easy to look down and eyeball that mm -hmm. and not have to worry about pulling those pins out. Right. Or having and them jam right. into your finger. Exactly. Or exactly. Run under the presser foot and break yes. the needle. I'm really good at that. Yeah, I've done that a lot. And we get to the end and we get to use the fun button again. Cut that thread. Yes. Okay. So now we are ready to press these. Mm -hmm. And we are going to press them with the seam allowances to the dark. Would you like me to do that for you? I would love that. Thank you. So when you press those together, it works so great because then those seam allowances are going to nestle together. So you're going to interlock. Yeah. And you want to do both seam allowances toward the dark. Right. Both seam allowances toward the dark. Right. And that'll raise um, the darker color. Now, see, when I'm doing this, I just go underneath and, and pull it Th to the that's inside. That's exactly what I do, too. Okay. I've got hands on both sides. And what that does then in the finished piece, it's going to all of the darker colored squares will be a little bit raised uh, from the design, which I really like because it gives it some texture and depth. Uh, I love that effect too. It's adding even an extra layer other than the quilting. Right, exactly. That you've got it physically lifted up. So now that we have those all pressed, Yes, now we need to cut some segments mm -hmm. here. So what we're going to do is we are going to cut one and a half inch segments. Mm -hmm. Just like we cut our strips okay. when we're starting with our strips to begin mm -hmm. with. We're going to square up one end. Exactly. So we're going to line this up so that we can get this edge nice and square. Okay. Okay. Start right there. I was just eyeballing to see if they were even. And were they? Um, they're pretty close. Okay. So we can check that when we get here by checking our lines across uh -huh. and see how we're doing. You're now doing when you good. cut, do you like to see a little piece of the fabric on the other side of the lines or do you like I, to be right I on the lines? I try to be like right on it. Right on the line. Okay. I don't think it really makes all that much of a difference, but I try. No. And I only ask because on something this small. Splitting hairs. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to cut segments right here. Okay. We're going to end up with a bunch of these segments so that we can put those all together to make that border. And you're just going to keep cutting mm -hmm. and keep cutting. So that when you have enough, what you will do is you will then start linking them together to make chains. So you'll start exactly. putting them right side together, just like this. Mm -hmm. Bring it over. And you're going to drop the foot down again. And this time we are going to have to start so that right we catch on the, edge. the exactly. edge. Yes. And do you not? Do you backstitch? I am not a backstitcher. Okay. Are you? Um, I'll do it if you want me to. Oh, well, I don't care. I, it's just when I, if I don't do it, like I just finished doing a triple Irish chain quilt mm -hmm. and I didn't do enough backstitching. And then also when you go and cut your strips after you've backstitched, You've released it anyway, so right. you can't hold it up and leave any, you know, have any weight on it at all. It pulls those stitches apart that's, and opens your seams true. back up. So that's true. That's the only reason I asked. Yeah. So I'm going to drop my foot down, and I'm going to scooch it up there just a little bit, 
and I'm going to stitch that quarter inch. Line it up exactly like I did with the other pieces. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to start sending them in one after another. So I'm just going to put this right up next to it just as I did when I was strip piecing the long strips together. Exactly. And one thing I want to say is the, the real purists are going to cut one and a half inch squares, single squares, yes. and piece them all together. Yes. That is insanity, and I will not partake. So I agree wholeheartedly. Okay, okay. Wholeheartedly. So this is the way that yes. I would choose to do this. Yes. Um, you can, um, if you're even more anal retentive than I am, you can piece together tiny little squares like postage stamps. So. Oh, wow. But I wanted to show, this is what we're going for here. This, um, this is the kind of border uh, that we're trying to put together. So it does have to be, you know, fairly accurate. It's a great frame for the piece. Um, but that is the simplest way, I believe, to do it. So. Oh, I think by far. Cool. Yeah. Yep. And it gives you great contrast around there. Exactly. So the next thing that we need to do, th this is um, some busy work that would be done beforehand just so that you can uh, set it aside and then pull it back out later when you're actually ready to put the border on. But the next thing that we need to do is to get these templates traced and uh, show how to do the fusible applique, apply them to the background fabric. My Mixmasters collection of fine cotton fabrics from Robert Kaufman is a fantastic family of basics and blenders. It's like a toolbox of textures for quilts, accessories, home decor, and more. I've included a wide variety of prints from dots to bubbles and stripes to squiggles. Some whimsical, some sophisticated. Look for my Mixmasters collections at a local independent fabric retailer near you, or you can find them all online at robertkaufman.com. Okay, so what we're going to do is I have some light steam seam too. This is truly the kind of fusible adhesive that I like to use, and the reason is it's not stiff. And when yes. you're making things like uh, baby banners or baby quilts, you want to have that you know light. You don't want to be stitching through cardboard layers. Um, right. It also helps if you're um, doing thread painting on top mm -hmm. because it's nice and thin. Oh yeah, I'm it sure. It works beautifully yeah, for that exactly. as well. Okay, so this is my template that I printed out. You saw me draw it right, on the computer. Right, so that's what you had in the computer, and you exactly. just pulled and then those I, elements out. I pulled out. all the elements okay. out to turn them into templates. Sometimes you have to do a little tweaking, but not so much on this one. But then I have these templates that I'll trace onto the, the paper side of the fusible adhesive. Okay. The light steam seam, too, we do have two pieces of paper. There's the top layer and the bottom that will peel away. So you just lay this over your template. In this case, it doesn't matter so much because all of the design is symmetrical. The letters are not symmetrical, and I did have to flip those because you want them to, when you press them on to the okay, wrong yeah. side of the fabric, to be the right way. So all of the patterns in the magazine, any patterns that I design, I've already flipped templates. So, so you've already done that mirror image to make exactly, it easy for us. That's exactly. That's appreciated. So it's just a matter of tracing. And I use a Sharpie marker because it dries fairly quickly. And I'm one of those people that runs my hand all over my design. If I use pencil, I end up with a lot of pencil lead all right, over my hands. Right, so you'd hands. have it all over your hand and smear it all over. Exactly. It, yeah. it gets all over yeah. everything else, all over the fabric. So it's just that simple. Trace um, all of your templates. That's the inside of the ear for the bear. It'd be a different color. And this is where we can really appreciate the simplicity of your designs, the ease at which you can trace things. Uh, especially in this one. I, I do have some that are a little more complicated, yeah. and I have been cursed out before. But yeah, it, it, it's a really that. simple process. <laughs> Okay, so basically with the two-sided paper, mm -hmm. all we have to do is peel one side off. Now you want to make sure though, the adhesive is loose. It presses to one side or the yes. other of the paper. Yes. Sometimes the, the adhesive shifts to the other side. That's really easy to fix. You just press it back on. And press it, okay. So when you peel it apart, you just want to make sure that your adhesive is on the side that you've traced on. And we just lay it down on the fabric and press it into place. Press you know, really well. You don't want this coming back up later. And it's that simple. Then we're going to just cut this out. And we're not leaving any seam allowance, anything. We're just cutting directly on you the line because that's... You have the choice. Some people want to overlap their pieces a little bit because they're not real sure of their satin stitching. So sometimes you might want to leave a little hair outside of the line and then you can overlap your pieces and you don't have to worry. This design, you don't have to do that so much. You don't have to really worry about it. They don't, uh, you're not going to have gaps between pieces. Okay, so then we've got that shape. Now what I do, in the next thing in the process, would be to transfer the dashed lines, which are usually just detail lines in the design, transfer them to the other side so that you have them on the right side of the fabric. Oh, okay. The best way to do this, to me, is to, just to hold it up to the light. And I can see that line coming through 
See how technical yeah. I am and yeah, all the tools are, that I yeah. use? <laughs> and that's just giving you a guideline, right? It's as easy as that. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is just to layer the face. I like to layer all the elements and get them fused together before actually putting them onto the background. You don't have to have all that fabric. Oh, that's and a great idea. Then yeah. you've got just one design you're plopping on your background. Exactly. So I'm just going to position this. And what I like also about the light steam seam too, you can position this and kind of press it into place and it's got enough tack, tackiness to it that it'll stay in place, you know, uh, while you decide if you like the design or not or you need to rearrange it. Yes, that, and that's one of the elements I love about it. That's another reason why I've traced these lines on the right side of the fabric because then it gives me my placement line for the nose to just fit right in there. Okay, so now I'm just going to fuse this all into place. And again, there's multiple layers, so you want to make sure that you're holding that iron on there long enough to really fuse the fabrics together. You don't want them peeling up when you go to the satin stitching process. And I do use a lot of steam. Whoops. I can see a little steam coming out of there. And see how easy that is to peel right back up, even if you make a mistake. So you're, in effect, just putting the puzzle back together. Yeah, it is. It's exactly like putting a puzzle together. Okay, so we have that finished. So now that we've done that, we just cut right along this line. There we go. Okay, and now we'll just peel that paper away. Oh, and you started from the inside. Oh, that makes sense. Right. Now that we have that edge that we can't fray, exactly. you can just start it from the exactly. inside. And so now the edges of the teddy bear's head are fusible but the rest of it doesn't have that stickiness so, or stiffness okay, so to we'll it. So we'll have no, it'll be able to flex and move however exactly. we need it to when we stitch it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so now we have the banner completely, uh, all the appliques fused mm -hmm. to it. And the thing and it was that... it's so easy. It's very easy. So uh, easy. You know, all you have to do is iron. Yeah. But the thing that I, I really try to impress on students when I'm out teaching this is that you really need to view the design as though it's in layers. Anyone that works in Photoshop or, or something like that, you know layers. And that's how this works. The teddy bear's head is the furthest back layer from your eyes. Oh, okay. The bow is in front mm -hmm. of that. The inner ears are in front of that. The nose is the highest layer. That would be the last thing that you would satin stitch. Okay. You always start with the lowest layer first. So what I'd like you to do, if you would, is start the satin stitching here on the teddy bear's ear because that's going to make it easy for us to go back when we stitch the bow and stitch over our loose end. Okay, so we shouldn't just be zipping around here just no, anywhere no, we want to no, go. No. We want to think exactly. about that a little bit. And we've put some sulky Tear Easy stabilizer underneath it and we just cut the, the stabilizer in pieces that's small enough to work with easily. So I've cut a piece for Kay that fits behind the teddy bear's head and will, you know, support and stabilize underneath when she's doing the satin stitching there. So it looks like you've got this under control. I'm going to let you have at it. And if you've got a baby on the way that you'd like to make these banners for, you can get the pattern in Quilting Celebrations magazine and make your own, or you can get more information at quiltingcelebrations.com. Thanks, Kay. Oh, my pleasure. So see, you can yeah, do it. Yeah, I can do it. It's yeah. a lot easier yeah. than you thought. Top quality sulky decorative threads help you get the look you love. Create soft, warm, elegant embroideries with gorgeous sulky rayons. Add exquisite texture, tone, and vibrancy to your quilting projects with Sulky Cotton blendables and solids. Lighten up the look with 60 weight Sulky Poly Light, or add a subtle sparkle or a brilliant shine with Sulky Metallics. With 19 stabilizers, Sulky has the perfect one for every project. Sulky has everything you need to create with confidence. Welcome back to Quilting Celebrations. We have our It's a Boy and It's a Girl banners. These are actually the finished versions, but I wanted you to see the quilting in the teddy bear's face because I like the design to begin with, but when I saw what my friend Jessica Jones did with the quilting on the teddy bear's face, I fell in love with these things. This pattern um, is basically a swirl back upon itself that just travels around the features in the teddy bear's face, and Jessica's going to show us a little bit about how to do that today. I, one of the things that I think is so interesting with free motion quilting is as an artist, when I'm drawing, I draw with a pencil and I'm drawing on paper. I move the pencil as I draw. But when you're free motion quilting, you have to think of it a little bit differently. And you're actually, it's like I'm moving the paper against the pencil. So when you have to rethink it that way, sometimes it's best to do a little drawing for yourself and get used to the pattern and how you're going to move in and out of the spaces that you're confined to, like the teddy bear's head here. So I've got a 
sketchbook here. Everybody, this is Jessica Jones, who has done a lot of the quilting in Quilting Celebrations magazine. I am so proud to uh, be able to have her work featured in the magazine. And I've got a sketchbook here for you. I'd like you to show me what you do. Okay. Usually when I learn a new quilting design, I like to kind of map out what I'm doing before I start quilting. So I can have the pattern in my head, and I, when I get to the machine, I know where I'm going. Exactly. Um, with this particular pattern, this swirl pattern, what I like to do is I start and I come in on a big swirl. So we're going to stop right there. Now I left that really open because I want to be able to pull back through and come out. Now when I come out, I'm echoing against this and going into another swirl leaving enough space to be able to get out. That's what I was thinking. So it is like echo, you're almost like shadow quilting. Really. Exactly. Yeah, staying the same distant, equidistant from the lines each Exactly. Time. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep making these swirls, but while we're making them, we're going to echo back on the swirls mm -hmm. that we've previously made. So we can come here and add another line in here and then come out yeah. into another swirl. And what that does, it just adds on to the design that we already have. Well, and it makes it easier to confine yourself to that space, too. When you run out of room, you can just do this point and then double back to get back within the yes. parameters. Okay. And another thing that helps with the echoing is, say I need to get over here, and I'm the whole way over here. Instead <laughs> of luck. having to stop and start, mm -hmm. what I can do is I can just echo, swirl out. I see where you're echo, going. Echo, echo and go around and then come back out. That's great. So this would be a really good pattern for like water or clouds or there, there's a lot of uses for it. Yeah, yeah. actually with water you would just elongate them yeah. a little bit more, yeah. um, you know, in a, a wider swirl. I can tell I'm going to have to learn it myself. <laughs> <laughs> that looks great. Do you want to try it on some fabric? Sure. Cool. So we've got some uh, some of my dot-to-dot -dot fabric that we used in the banner uh, from Robert Kaufman and we've sandwiched it so that Jessica can just kind of play around a little bit and you can watch. Now where would you start like within the design though, in the teddy bear say? Well what was your if, I were, point? if I were to be quilting this right now what I would do is I would do all of my ditch work or my outlining work first. Oh sure. That way it's a little bit more stabilized right. And I especially like ditch work and outlining because it makes these different elements pop out. Especially in applique, yeah. Yes. It's very textural. And so after I do that, what I would do is I would find a nice little hiding spot, usually in a corner or a little crevice, and I would start in there and then work my way right around. around. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to start my swirl, and I'm going to remember to keep it open yeah. um, because I want to be able to get back out. Exactly. And we've, we've used a little bit of contrasting color thread here, so it, it's dark enough for you to see, hopefully. We actually, uh, Jessica actually used a very light color thread for the quilting on the bear. This, I, I think this would be a great pattern for using on water or clouds, uh, just an all-over swirl pattern to fill space. I love the texture that it gives the quilt. So we're going to come back out and come into another swirl. I also happen to know this is a lot slower than Jessica works on a long arm machine. She's amazing. <laughs> now I'm going to echo back and come back out and go into another swirl. Going in, leaving enough room to come out. Now I'm going to do some echoing to be able to fill in this space. Mm -hmm. The reason that we're doing this on a larger piece of batting than, rather than stitching it within the teddy bear is so that you can see what the actual pattern is. You'll learn as you uh, get better at doing this and practicing how to fill that space or specific spaces. So this is just a good way for you to see the overall pattern.